Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography. Welcome back to the channel. Today I have a quick Lightroom tutorial for you and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a different way of editing your images in Lightroom. So let's jump over to Lightroom and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so we have this photo here. It's not a brilliant photo, as you can see. Um, it's actually kind of dull and boring. Um, and it's the kind of thing you probably say to yourself, just, just don't, but it's not very good. Just like pretend you didn't take it. But I think we can fix it and make it look good. So normally what you would do with something like this is you would maybe bring down the highlights, bring up the shadows, maybe just the clarity a bit, and bring up the vibrance and so on and so forth. So you have something like this, which is, it's a little bit better, but it's still kind of dull and, well, it's not very good, is it? Okay, uh, but there's a bigger problem here, and that is, it's actually a problem with Lightroom itself. Um, when you do kind of a lot of uh, adjustments like this, where you're kind of pushing your sliders to the extreme, you can end up with this problem where you have haloing on kind of objects that stick into the sky. So if you look over here on this pole that's sticking up, you can see it's kind of, we kind of got this black halo around everything. And you can kind of see it down here as well. In fact, you'll uh, know that I've pointed this out to you. If you hadn't noticed it already, you'll probably start noticing it on images people post online and you'll be like, oh, that was edited in Lightroom. But there is a way around it. And I'm going to show you now a different way of editing your images. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to edit using entirely the masks tool. So instead of using the standard controls, we're going to work entirely within the mask section. So we're basically going to work in layers. And to start off, what we want to do is we want to bring up the foreground. And to do that, we need to select everything but the sky. So the quickest way to do that is to select the sky. So we're going to select the sky like so. And then all we need to do is just invert the mask here. And now we're adjusting the foreground. So we'll just bring up the exposure a little bit, maybe bring up the shadows a bit too. One of the key things to remember is you want to kind of keep your image looking natural. Well, I mean, maybe you don't, but I prefer to keep my images looking natural. So and maybe bring up a tiny bit of clarity here as well. Just kind of add some detail into it. And straight away, that's much better. So the next thing we want to do is we're gonna bring down the sky. And for this, what I want to do is I want to kind of have a gradient bringing the sky down. So it's kind of darker at the top and brighter at the bottom. So kind of more, to, it just kind of focuses uh, your attention a bit more. Um, so the obvious thing to do there would be to just do like a straight linear gradient like this. But if I do that, say, and if I bring this down, you'll notice that it is affecting the clock tower and making it darker. So what you can do is you can actually intersect this with the sky mask. So if I go up here and go intersect and select sky. So this is now effectively cutting out the clock tower and everything else in the foreground, which is exactly what we want. Um, so now we can keep tweaking this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the curves tool because this kind of gives me a bit more natural look. And maybe I'll bring down the highlights a bit as well. Again, trying not to go too far, because you start to see things get a bit weird. Okay, so already this is looking a lot better than it was a minute ago, but it's still not perfect and we can do a bit more to it. So what I want to do next is, um, if you look in here kind of in the pier area, some of it is still a bit dark. So we're going to bring that up a little bit. And to do this, let me just shrink this back. I'm going back to our foreground mask and I'm going to duplicate it. Okay, and then I just want to reset everything on this. Okay, so to reset quickly everything, all you have to do is just double click on this little preset um, section here and this will reset everything. Okay, so what I want to do here is I just want to kind of uh, select some of this and to do that we're going to uh, intersect, uh, use the intersect tool again and this time we're going to intersect with a brush. So if I just brush across here and then if we look at our mask you can see we just kind of have this area and again it's still cutting out the sky because it's intersecting with the sky mask we created at the start. Okay, so all I want to do here is just bring this up a tiny little bit. Maybe bring up our contrast a little bit here as well. Okay, so next up I want to add a vignette. 
So we could just go back to the base layer and use the vignette tool or kind of like the default controls and use the vignette layer. But we're, we're going to stick to our uh, test here of only using masks. So um, simple solution is we're going to use a radial gradient like so. Let's just drag this out. If you need to, you can actually just zoom out here and you can adjust the gradient that way and then just zoom back in. Okay, so uh, with our gradient, we just want to make sure we invert it so that it's affecting the outer area and not the inner area. And for when I'm doing a vignette with a gradient, I like to just use the curve on it because it kind of gives you a more natural result. Okay, and again, that's now looking better because we're kind of focusing all the attention in. And one of the advantages of this using a radial gradient rather than the default vignette tool is you can actually move it around a bit like so. Okay, that, that's pretty good. And then finally, what I want to do is just kind of do an overall slight little grade on this. So I am going to create another mask. And this time I'm going to do a luminance range. And if we scroll up here and just basically activate that. And what we're going to do is we're going to just bring the saturation up a little bit, like so. And then on our curves, I actually have a preset curve that I got from uh, one of my presets. And it is this. And this just adds kind of a little kind of blue green to the shadow areas. Um, you can do this manually. So I'll just show you this is the actual curve here. And the advantage, again, of doing this on a layer or on a mask is that we can control the overall amount. So if it's too much, we can just dial it back down a bit. And if it's not enough, we can dial it up. So we get somewhere like this. And that, I kind of added that kind of cool overall there just because it was such a dull day, adding the kind of cool tones adds to that uh, kind of stormy um, feeling brewing on the background. So if we go back and look at where we started, which is there, I think you can see that is a vast improvement. And if we go back to our default controls here, you can see that we haven't actually touched any of them. So we have edited the entire video using just the mask still. Is there a need to do this on every um, image that you edit? Absolutely not. But it is, it's handy to know just another way of working in Lightroom and you should play around with it and try it out for yourself. And you can see that the mask still is actually really powerful in Lightroom. And it's something that you never know when it might come in useful to you. Uh, the other advantage of this is because these are all fairly dynamic and AI driven masks, um, you could probably save this as a preset and then use it on another image. The only other thing I would do with this um, is to kind of, if I just actually get off here so you don't see the handles, is the overall composition is probably not brilliant um, because I was kind of, the reason I was kind of pointing up like this is I was trying to get some of the seagulls in and and seagulls being seagulls don't exactly respond to direction so um, I was kind of hoping to get one up here but I tried a few times and I couldn't get, the sh get them in so uh we could just add one in in photoshop and to give you show you what i mean here's one i made earlier <laughs> and you can see i've added the seagull in and that's a better overall composition and i think that works quite well um to do this i basically just use generative fill in photoshop and then just color correct with it so there you have it. That is a different way of editing in Lightroom. I hope you found this interesting. If you have, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.